This video will describe how to do flame test slab, how to do them safely and to find out everything that you need to do. Um, before I get going though, I want to show you, uh, the video will be shot from far away, so you won't be able to see this. This is the uh, tool that we'll be using. This is a nichrome wire. That's uh, just a metal rod with a nichrome wire soldered to the end, and on the end there's a little loop. I'll probably refer to the loop uh, a few times in the video, and that's what I'm talking about. Look at this setup, and there we go. Now you can see what I'm doing. Okay, let's get started. <clears throat> so for this lab, what you're going to need, uh, obviously, is with any lab where we're going to use fire and chemicals, is a pair of safety goggles first, and we will light our Bunsen burner. Light it first, then turn on the gas. Get sure we got a good, strong blue flame there. I'm going to turn off the lights because, well, I'll do that in a minute. What we're going to do is we're going to take various salt solutions. And by salt solution, we just mean we took a salt, sodium chloride, copper chloride, barium chloride, some kind of salt, and we just put it in water and let it dissolve. That's already done for you. You don't have to do that. First thing you're going to want to do is to get a small beaker. This is a 100 mil, a 50 mil would do. And you want to rinse it out with some distilled water out of your distilled water bottle. Make sure it's nice and clean. If we have any impurities in this water, it's going to mess up our colors as we do our flame tests. So uh, we also want to rinse off our nichrome wire as best we can uh, using that water. <clears throat> and then we want to clean it in the fire you can see, well I don't know if you can see, I can see, I don't know if this video will show any of this, but uh, there's obviously some color coming off of this from a previous time it's been used. It's very difficult to get all the old salts off of the wire, um, so we just rinse, rinse, repeat, rinse, burn, repeat, rinse, burn, repeat. We may not get all of the color out. Uh, what we want what we'll, we'll, we'll feel good about it if all we're getting is an orange flame because the nichrome wire by itself with nothing else on it will give us kind of an orange flame, kind of like what you're seeing right there. Whether you can see that in the camera or not, I don't know. I'm going to turn off the lights whenever I do this uh, when I get going. You might be able to see things a little bit better then. So <clears throat> there we go. So I'm going to take one of my salt solutions now, now that I've got it relatively clean, and I'm going to take off the lid and I'm going to dip uh, it in, I decided not to use that one, I'll use this one instead. Eh, I don't want to use that one either. I'm very persnickety. Here we go, this is the one I want. I'm going to dip the nichrome wire in here, and that's another reason I want to clean it off first because I don't want to contaminate the salt solution. And I'm going to put that in my flame and I'm going to put it on the edge of the flame where it's the hottest and I'm going to see a color. Hopefully you can see that. I would imagine that you can. It's pretty obvious. I can see like a light purple flame. And so whatever salt that is, it obviously gives off that kind of light purplish flame that you can see right there. Now you'll know what this is, it's labeled. There's a list of salts that you need to use and, and they're only labeled by their cation, by the first, the positive ion. So it, if it's potassium chloride, which this is, it'll just say potassium, it'll say K plus on it. Uh, the salts that we're using, we're using a barium salt, it's on your list, on your sheet, but there's a barium salt, a potassium salt, sodium, lithium, uh, calcium, copper, I think that's mostly it. And so that's what you're going to do now. What, you're going to record what you see. You're going to record well with, with this salt, whatever it was. You saw that light purple flame. But that's not all. We also want to know what it looks like through uh, when we separate the colors out using the spectrum. So we're going to have a pair of goggles, uh, spectrum goggles, like these. 
and we're going to have those available to us and we're going to look through them at the fire. Now we got to do this in the dark so you got to be real careful um, to be uh, you know be safe first. If you're not sure if you can't see something don't do anything. But these are the goggles. I'm going to put these on over my glasses and I'm going to see some stuff. Now you got to be careful. When I put this on I want to see what colors are coming off of the wire when I have my salt solution in it. Obviously, without my salt solution, I still see some colors. I see uh, pretty much uh, a lot of violet, blue, some green, and a little bit of red. But uh, yellow and orange are pretty well missing. There's not much yellow or orange. Just a tiny bit of red, a tiny bit of green, and then a lot of blue, violet. That's what's there right now. So whenever I put my salt in the flame, I've already got my glasses on. I know what it looks like without the salt. And what I want to do is I want to see how it changes. What are the new colors that come in whenever I put my salt in? And so whenever I do that, obviously if I look at the flame itself, I see that light purple like I did before. But if I look over to the side where, the, where I can see the, the separated spectrum, what I'm seeing, I see a lot of green and yellow a lot of green and yellow and some violet that was not there before. A good way to do it is to kind of have the have the wire halfway up the flame so that it's obvious you look below and above and below the flame. The stuff coming up, that's the stuff you're stuff above but not below, that's what you're interested in. And so I see what I would do then is I would write down on my paper the observations, I'd write what I see not only for the overall color, the the light purple, but then over and under the spectrum colors, I would put the individual uh, colors that I see separated out whenever I do it through the glasses, and those would be uh, for me. What I, I don't, I'm, you know, I'm not putting the the glasses on the camera, so you just have to trust me. I'm seeing a lot of yellow, green, and violet is what I see, and so I would write that down. Now, as soon as I get done with this, I need to go use the next salt. So I need to rinse this off again. I'm, gonna, I'm done with this flame, uh, so I'll turn that off. So I want to rinse this off. I want to get that nice and rinsed off. Do that a couple times and then if the flame were still up I would heat it again to burn it. Uh, burn that water off, do it again, rinse, it's like lather, rinse, repeat is what we're doing. Get it nice and clean, get it to the point where we're hopefully not seeing any of that light purple coming off anymore, and then we'll know we're ready to start and you'll grab your next uh, solution, whatever that is. Once you've done all of the different solutions, all of the different salts that you're supposed to do, then there are three unknown solutions that you have to do. You have to, there's a, they're just labeled A, B, and C. A, B, and C. That's not boron and carbon. Those are actually just unknowns. A, B, C. Generic labels. And those A, B, C will be one of these salts. Oh, each one of them will be a salt that you just did. And you're going to have to match it. So you, if for example, uh, when you did B, you got that light purple that we just saw. You would know, well, whatever that light purple that we just saw, whatever that salt is, which it was labeled, I'm just not telling you, uh, you would know that was the answer. That's what B was. You'd identify it that way. And so kind of like in the spectrum tube where we would see a color, I'd tell you what it was, and then later I'd show it to you again, and you could say, oh, that's hydrogen or something like that. We're doing the same sort of thing here. We're going to identify three unknown salt solutions by the colors that they give off. Uh, always making sure to uh, rinse uh, your nichrome, N-I-C-H-R-O-M-E wire in between. So the salt solutions are all in these little bottles that they're labeled uh, with what is in, what the positive ion inside of them is. And uh, there's at least two bottles of each kind you're gonna have to work together to share someone uh, might you know, if two different groups have the one that you need, you might just need to wait a minute, uh, communicate, uh, just kind of wait. These will all be up at the front. Uh, this is, oh, this is interesting. This is in the old building. We're at the old LHS. Uh, I don't know what at the front will mean in the new LHS, but 
we're going to, for in the old adult HS, these will all be up at the front tables and you can come get these and go back to your lab station. Stay at the same lab station as you're working, just go back and forth to the tables. Be careful, it'll be dark. We have to make it dark in the room to be able to see the colors, which makes it a little dangerous to so make sure, uh, we'll, we'll try to get all of our Bunsen burners lit before we turn off the lights and then we will leave our Bunsen burners lit. Um, so make sure that your partner is standing with the flame when you go back to get your new salt solution because we don't want to leave the flame unattended. So that will be all. That's uh, what you're going to do and should be fun. Be careful. Have a good time. And oh, one question people have, can I wear these over the goggles? And the answer is yes. Or you can just hold them up for a second. Sometimes it works out better if uh, one person puts the nichrome wire in while the other person looks through. If you're coordinated to do them both of do both things at the same time, then more power to you. So that's what we're going to be doing. <clears throat> Enjoy yourself and try not to lose an eye.